We're almost at the end of this event. Carlo, for the conclusions, we are delighted to introduce Libor Lochman, ladies and gentlemen, Executive Director of SIR. Come forward, Libor. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Good Libor. Good afternoon, Welcome back. once again. Thank you, thanks. Yeah. Then we have also... We have Philippe Citroën, Director General of UNIFE, who should be online. Uh, Let's see if... Here Philippe it is, Philippe. Is Welcome. Yes, he's there. Yes, okay. Good afternoon. We have also Daria Kuzmina, Research and Innovation Project Manager in Urban Rail of UITP. Good uh, afternoon. Thank you, everyone. And we have also uh, with us uh, Bardo Schettini Gerardini, the Director of Operation of EIM. Unfortunately, Monica Heiming, the uh, Executive Director of EIM, she was not available. So Bardo uh, will have uh, to stay with us today, and we are really happy to have you on board. Welcome. Okay, thank perhaps... You, thank you, thank you, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Welcome. So perhaps an opening question to all of you, because we've heard a lot of uh, the innovations that Shift to Rail managed to make. What did it mean to you? What do you think about what you've heard in the next two days? Perhaps, Libor, I'll start with you. I mean, for me, it's a nice continuation of the closure of what I've what been participating here. For me, it's a clear the opportunity of making the rail more competitive. So otherwise, the innovation would not make any sense. We really have to do it because we need to be more competitive and more integrated in the multimodal transportation chain. Mm -hmm. Okay, perhaps I ask the same question. Mr. Citroën, Philippe. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. It was a pleasure to hear our, uh, our uh, uh, Canadian colleague to say that uh, we know that in Canada there are a lot of investment, a lot of big projects in uh, rail, so it's, have, it's a pleasure to, to have you on, on the screen. Uh, the, the second thing I would like to say, what is fantastic in, uh, in Shift Rail, we started in 2000. 14 already, but uh, I remember it was during the Greek presidency that there was a, an agreement. So, in less than it took two years to start uh, really, and in less than four years, a lot of things have been done. And you know, there's this catalog of solutions, which is quite impressive. But the most important thing for me, in addition to what uh, Libor just said concerning the competitiveness of the rail industry, is uh, the, the fact that there has been almost 500 rail stakeholders involved in this. Uh, journey of shift rail one and then it's the first time that the uh, manufacturers uh, railway undertakings infrastructure managers and uh, the uh, the university the uh, research centers have been able to work together and have been able to produce things because on what you see on the catalog of solutions you have some results and that is fantastic i think it's a huge progress for the the rail sector which was a bit scattered when but I think this is the most important thing that happened in the past five years on shift terrain. I think, Carlo, we could say that. That's something we have seen the last two days that is working together, having those partners around the table. That's really something. This, I think, is uh, the, the most important aspect of this exercise we are doing together. Uh, Philippe has been behind uh, the creation of shift to rail so he knows uh, uh, the efforts needed to arrive there. And after this uh, five years uh, journey, uh, we can say that the sector is uh, together to, to go to a different step. Yeah. And the different step will be the successor of shift to rail uh, but also has been said many times in, in these days, it's the sector uh, mm -hmm. taking ownership of changing the rail system, how it is operating in the future, uh, together with us, together with the Commission, together with the, uh, the European Agency of Rail uh, and the standardization body. Uh, but it's really a sector, as uh, Libor was saying, reappropriating itself of the competitiveness of rail. Yeah. I think it's a really strong message that we the want to pass. The previous panel was pointing it out as well, that it's very important that, that we move forward in the same direction, every partner of it. So I think we have to keep that one in. In mind. Absolutely. Okay, Daria, I come to you. Same question. What do you expect from all the innovations that you've heard about uh, that Shift to Rail is doing now? Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for your question. First of all, for Urban Rail, it's a big honor uh, to be involved in the preparation uh, of the uh, Shift to Rail successor. And uh, I know that we've done a lot of in uh, this program. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, we can extend the implications of different solutions also on the urban rail sector. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Carlo, the next steps are very important as well. I come back to you in a minute. First, we go to Bardo. Bardo, are you still there? Same question for you. How, how are you looking to all the innovations that we have heard about uh, from Shift to Rail? Bardo. 
Yeah, right. well, actually, as, as Philippe said, I mean, the uh, lots have been done and lots of, we, we need to do a lot more. Uh, and this, I think, uh, Shift to Rail has been uh, an example of how collective work, uh, you know, through, uh, I mean, among all the big players, the key players of, uh, of the rail sectors can really, uh, let's say, uh, uh, deliver a new solution that are really, I mean, helping uh, to make rails really uh, fit for the future. So in that in that sense, uh, I mean, I, I've been uh, listening uh, uh, watching actually a little bit the um, here and there uh, other um, webinars on hydrogen or, or, or even uh, this morning uh, on the RTMS, and I, I can see clearly that you know uh, we have a lots of uh, challenges you know to make you know rail greener to make. Uh, 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 rail more efficient, uh, digitalization, and so on and so forth. And actually, shift to rail has been and must be, uh, and still will be, the uh, the reply to you know to those collective efforts. So we have to go on. But you you say you point out you say well there are a lot of challenges, lots uh, uh, needs to be done. What are you thinking about? What are the next steps to be taken? Well, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, of um, uh, interest, uh, as far as the um, the infrastructure manager is concerned, because of course IEM is uh, is about uh, railway uh, infrastructure managers. I think that we have a quite uh, um, I mean we have made a, a very good step ahead with the let's say, successor of uh, of Shift Rail um, in terms of creating uh, you know what we call the, you know a more systemic approach uh, through the system pillar. And um, in that sense, is something that we welcome very much um, because we think that uh, it's, um, uh, let's say, it's a proof that uh, uh, the future uh, successor of, of Shift to Rail will look into the market, the uh, needs, and the, of course, more into, into the, let's say, the user's needs uh, by having, let's say, a more comprehensive uh, and, uh, let's say, uh, inclusive uh, approach. And that is something uh, very good. But there are challenges also there. I don't know whether you want me to go through, you know, just a few of, of those challenges, or, or shall I shut up now? Very much. I hand over to Carlo because I heard the system pillar is something very yeah. important for the successor of Shift yeah. to Rail. But I will go back to Philippe Citroen about the system pillar because effectively we talk a lot about the system pillar with the operating community. But Philippe, I come back to you because, uh, uh, as I said before, you have been behind the Shift to Rail, and I have two questions for you. The first one is. What do, would you like to see more in the shift to rail successor and how you see uh, the system pillar in the shift to rail? How, how you think we, it will be? Because uh, the supply industry that you represent will be a, a major actor there. Uh, uh, first, first of all, I have to say that uh, uh, for us, there are big challenges, and they are uh, within the framework of the, the Green Deal, which is, you know, the hallmark of uh, Mrs. Van der Leyen. The second thing is that we have to be careful because we have to continue to innovate because we have other sectors who are competing with us, and they are also trying to, to, to be innovative and to show that uh, their sector is uh, as green as we are. But in fact, we, we, we have a, a special position in terms of... Uh, uh, of, of greening on, on, on GHH uh, emission. That's uh, the, the first thing I, I would like to say. I think there are a lot of things that can, still have to be done. Uh, and uh, I think the changes that we saw between Shift to Rail 1 and Shift to Rail 2 is that uh, there's been a kind of big push on everything which is going on digitalization. Post digitalization started with the RTMS, and it has been mentioned on many occasions. And we still have to work on the game changers of the RTMS. But the RTMS is absolutely essential because without the RTMS, you cannot have, have a single European railway uh, area. It means that uh, you don't have the connection between the member states, between the, the rail network. This is absolutely at the heart of the future of our sector. So we need to be to continue to be very proactive on this. And from what I understand, we need. If you look at the market share of, uh, of of rail for freight and for passengers, the, the numbers are quite low. So we need to continue to invest 
and it is part of the debate we might have later on about the budget of uh, uh, of sheet to rail too. Because if you don't have an ambitious budget, and yesterday there was a presiding board meeting of UNIFE, and our CEO said that they expect that the EU participation in the uh, in sheet to rail, because you know that the sheet to rail is partly financed by the private and public sector and partly financed by the EU institution. We really hope, and we have mentioned a figure of one million five that will be, be close to this number, but still there are the negotiations at the level of the council and the and the um, and the parliament going back to the second question it is true that in shift rail they, they will be on, on there will be two things on one side there will be the innovation pillar which looks like to what we have been doing and the system pillar the system pillar is very important for us because there's been quite a lot of initiative and i, I saw one of the movie during a large time by young people saying look they are too many uh, systems for, for signaling. And in fact, there's been quite a lot of initiatives coming from the uh, uh, other associations or around the take-ins in foster managers. I think the system pillar is, is a good way to put everyone in, in the same, uh, around the same table, have a, a strategy. Maybe we are not going to speak about uh, the revision of the TSI because it could be uh, too technical, but together with ERA, and under the, the, the direction of, uh, of uh, Shitre and the GU, who knows and has been doing an excellent job, we have to work uh, together on this system pillar, which is in a way uh, the way the architecture of the, the rail system for the next year. So as Shift to Rail 2 will go from 20. 21 to 2030, it's really time to know what is the strategy and what we are going to do in terms of research. And uh, that is why I think the initiative that uh, uh, was launched by Carlo goes in the really good direction. And on our side, uh, on the side of the manufacturers, we'll be happy to work on the system pillar and to make proposals soon. Thank you, Philippe. So the system pillar as the architecture yes, for the future the of system. rail. <laughs> but I will ask the question the other way around uh, to Libor, because I think uh, we have talked with you a lot about the system pillar. Yep. But how you see the involvement of the operating community, infrastructure manager and railway undertakings in the innovation pillar? Because uh, uh, we have uh, application from a series of members that would like to be involved. How you see this in, 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 in practice happening? I mean, in practice, what I expect to be done is that those uh, who will be represented, representing the operating community there, so infra managers and the RUs, will be you know, closely following the, the customer demand. So what they would be pushing for is the, the efficiency of the, you know, for the efficiency of the innovations that have to be produced through the innovation pillar. So that's what I meant, you know, by innovation leading us to the competitiveness yeah. through the automation of the processes, through the higher efficiency, through, in fact, you know, also the better connectivity. Again, we are co talking about the connectivity, <laughs> and and uh, and those are the factors that uh, do drive, in fact, the interests of the RUs and the IMs to be in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perhaps we could ask the same question to Daria as well, exactly. what she expects, uh, Daria. Um, thank you for your question. So more globally, urban rail uh, actors have uh, a clear role to ensure that uh, Shift Rail Successor is designing solutions that answer the needs of all passengers in different scenarios, including urban one. Um, and referring uh, to some numbers, uh, for example, uh, all three uh, urban uh, rail modes of transport, uh, metro, tram, and uh, regional and suburban rails, uh, has in total uh, over 30 billion of uh, passengers in the European re region uh, per year. So when it's a quite grand uh, number. So uh, that is why, of course, there is a high expectations to uh, take into account uh, of uh, these requirements and to work together with the industry. Because the role of the operators, of course, to uh, be not only the interface with the passengers, because uh, of course they uh, know uh, about the needs uh, of the passengers, but also to provide the clear uh, requirements so the industry can answer uh, to these requirements and produce something that will be easily uh, taken uh, on the market. So, and the role of uh, urban rail actors and more specifically operators also in checking these solutions, uh, testing these solutions and validate them. So I think uh, it's uh, very uh, important to have this collaboration 
and uh, I think it's a good uh, platform uh, for harmonization of uh, specifications of the urban uh, rail actors. So uh, I think uh, it's uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. I, I understand also that simplicity is very important. It must be easy to take it to the market. Well, uh, <laughs> this I think is one of the most difficult things on the contrary because uh, effectively we have a multiplicity of systems and uh, effectively I would say urban uh, uh, is more complex uh, because we have a local system that we need to adapt. But we believe also that digitalization and automation will help to harmonize much and more, more in this. But going back also to Daria once again, Daria, you have been working with us on the uh, setting up of the proposal for the partnership for uh, shift to rail successor. Um, and uh, we discussed a lot about the system pillar and the role of the urban community in the system pillar. Uh, how you see this uh, uh, participation of the urban community in the system pillar? Which role and which objective you would like to achieve? Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, it's uh, very important to understand that uh, we have uh, some requirements that are common for all rail society. And of course, we should focus uh, on these uh, priorities that are common for uh, all of us. Uh, but also, we need uh, to understand that the local market uh, has, um, and more specifically for urban rail operators, have some specificities and um, of course, uh, it's also important uh, to, to, to understand uh, in the process of developing the new solutions. Um, so it's also very important that uh, knowing that uh, not all operators have the same uh, funding capabilities, that they are involved in the governance process, that we can ensure that um, everything uh, that is delivered uh, is according uh, to the vision uh, of, of these operators. So I think uh, for urban rail operators, this is being in the system pillar is something new because I know uh, that uh, there are developments that are already done in, uh, in this shift to rail program. Uh, it's uh, very important to understand what was already produced, what can be applied for urban rail, what should be else developed or adjusted that uh, it could be possible to use uh, for, uh, for the whole sector. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you remember, Indra, that uh, uh, Libor asked for 1.5 billion euros? Yes, I, I remember. I continue doing he so asked it for you. <laughs> exactly. But uh, uh, there was no follow-up to the request, I think, yesterday. <laughs> he stopped there. No? I don't know, but, uh, but um, well, we know there is a lot of tension on the discussion about the budget at this point in time. We have an ambitious program on one side, there's a lot of tension. What happens if we need to, do, to make choices? On which we need to, on what we need to focus? I mean, if, if you will not be given yes. the budget, the you budget mean, then... of one and yes. a half million billion. Ah, that's a difficult <laughs> question. <obviously. laughs> but I will ask also to the uh, other no, participants. No, no, because I mean, for me, I, I'm sorry to you know to stick on yeah. what I always promote. It's the automation. So uh, mm -hmm. automation of the processes. So if we if we should really push for something that will, and I'm going back to the market uptake, mm -hmm. that will be essential. Something that will help the railway is an automation of the processes on all the levels. If we will have to prioritize, most probably, if we don't have enough budget, but we have to start from the perspective of, you know, what can be done in the most efficient way to reach the high level of the automation. That's one of the most effective yeah. ways. Yeah. Perhaps we ask the others, what are you thinking about it? What are the choices that we have to make? Perhaps uh, we go to Mr. Citroën. Yeah, yes, on my side, you know that in Ship to Rail 2, we have what we call the transforming projects, and the, the rail community has been uh, working through SRIA. It's, uh, uh, on a specific uh, program where we have identified our priority. It's true that if we don't get the, the billion five, we have to make a choice. Uh, then we'll see which are the companies who want to continue to be on the uh, second journey of uh, of Chitray because some of them might say that they, there's no budget, so they prefer to do something else. But, but uh, I agree with uh, um, with uh, Libor on the fact that digitalization, automation, game changers are certainly uh, a, a big part of the, the program, and there are a big expectation. But today, you know, there are also expectations on some programs which are sometimes not really directly managed by uh, 
uh, ship theory because, uh, but for example, of these all these issues concerning hydrogen uh, batteries. So the, you you need you really need uh, if you want to bring the, the the passengers back to the to the rail sector because we have, during this pandemic uh, we we saw that uh, the ridership is uh, quite low. You you need to have innovations and you need to show that uh, you 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 are going to make a, a progress and. Uh, uh, we, what we see in uh, in ship theory one is that we have already things that can be go to the the, the market and that is uh, absolutely essential and I think that it's the pressure we'll have certainly from you Carlo and from the the commissions to be sure that in the transforming project we will go as far as possible to the uh, market even if of course we must not forget all the TRL which are uh, uh, going from exploratory research but we have to be sure that uh, the, 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 the customers will be happy to have those new innovation and technology, and that would be the priority for us. So a customer-centric approach, that's yes. something that we've heard a lot about those two days as well, Carlo. Yeah. Absolutely, this is one of the fundamental questions. But I would like to ask the question also to Bardo about uh, how we prioritize in case, and uh, to Daria. Bardo, maybe you would like to, to tell us your views. Yes, well, actually, um, it's uh, clearly, um, well, first of all, we, we, we do hope that the, the budget, you know, <laughs> will follow the ambition that uh, the uh, policymakers, you policymakers are, you know, are, are putting on the, on the uh, deliverable or shift to rail. But having said that, clearly, I mean, we have to, if we have to prioritize, well, uh, I would say that um, uh, I would concur with what uh, Lieber and Philippe said, I mean, in the sense that uh, uh, digitalization and automation are clearly um, the, uh, the backbone for the, of the future um, efficient uh, railway system. Um, within that aspect, what I think is very important for us, at least as, as uh, infra manager, is that, um, and, and it, it, it is linked also with, the, uh, with what we discussed about um, uh, the system pillar, is to make sure that uh, we develop solutions that are really standardized, open, interoperable, uh, and harmonized, uh, so that you can really fit um, the new technologies also to uh, systems that are not always, uh, um, let's say, facing the same uh, the same uh, kind of challenges. I'm, I'm talking about, for instance, uh, you know, the uh, networks that you may have in uh, in the Netherlands railway networks in the Netherlands or in Norway and Finland, which are completely different and they have to fulfill different uh, uh, needs. In that sense, to have uh, uh, a technology that is adaptable. Uh, and interoperable uh, allows uh, you know to to tailor made easy solution really uh, from the market without uh, creating ad hoc uh, specificities adaptability of innovation that's a very important task for you carlo yes this is something that uh, we'll have to to find a way to have uh, interoperable without differences yes. that is sometimes <laughs> is a contradiction in the wording but yeah, uh, we some, heard uh, also somehow. this but maybe daria also you would like to tell us what happens if the budget expectation will not be matched? Which, what will you will have to prioritize for, from your urban needs? It's a, it's a very good question. Uh, so uh, I would say that uh, we all agree that we should be focused on the user-centric uh, approach. Um, and uh, for the passengers, it's important to go from point A from B, point B in the most easiest and uh, uh, smoothly way so he doesn't think about which mode of transport he needs to use so it's very important also not to be focused only on uh, our internal needs uh, as a rail sector but also uh, have the interface with other modes of transport and uh, I uh, say so not because urban rail is rail and urban uh, mobility uh, system uh, two in one but also because uh, for long distance uh, railway it's also important to create uh, a door-to-door -door mobility and I know there were some developments uh, in the shift to rail now but of course we need to do much more and uh, I would say that uh, of course digitalization automation for sure but also uh, focus on mass uh, is, is also important. 
focus on Mars, but also open up, not mm -hmm. only st being stuck sure. only in rail, but open up to other, other modes of transport. How do you look at it? it will, we need to integrate to the other modes of transport. Mm -hmm. But today we had the panel about uh, the freight with uh, Elizabeth Werner, and we discussed and there were ports present, uh, logistic value chain, uh, and so on and so on. So this will be one of the ways that we need to think on how we integrate mm -hmm. uh, this part. We need to keep a keep keep key priority because uh, the shift to rail uh, joint undertaking and its successor will be on rail research innovation. So we need to keep this in the core of what we want to do, but we, be need, we need to be sure that we do this integrating the other modes of transport, integrated airports, sure. integrated ports for passenger, for logistic, and so on and so on. But uh, I think we are almost uh, finished uh, with the time, so we need to <laughs> start to wrap up uh, maybe uh, okay. now. Maybe we can ask a last you would like to intervene, Libor, no? No, no, I mean, I'm waiting. I mean, I'm just quite happy with the discussion, thank you. No, but I, I mentioned the multimorality at the beginning. So yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, you but uh, maybe to do so. what we can have is a final statement from all of you mm -hmm. on two things. The first one is, uh, um, which is the takeaways that you had? You had much more here present, so you have uh, maybe something more to, uh, that you have experienced during this uh, two days conference. And uh, the second one is, uh, um, what would you like to see uh, in, in the European Year of Rail as a key message that we'd like to pass? Okay, so if I start with the, the key takeaways is that uh, I really appreciate there is a huge enthusiasm so, er, and a readiness. Mm -hmm. So everyone is ready to go ahead with the program, with the project, with, uh, with not only for the Year of Rail, but for the, for the decade or even more. Uh, with the research and innovation, because if you want to achieve the new system architecture, and that will be elaborated and prepared by the system pillar that, of course, it's uh, stretching through the next 30 years mm -hmm. as a minimum. It's a minimum. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is my takeaway, that uh, there is a readiness to go for that, not to look just for a few years from now, but really for the system perspective uh, over the next 30 to 40 years. Yeah. So that's the takeaway. Year of rail. I mean, year of rail. We are all <laughs> looking for the year of rail as a, as a fantastic opportunity to communicate and to communicate in a very simple terms, huh? that, that uh, the, the people will understand that the rail is there for you. So the, we build the railway for the customers, whether on freight or on, a, on the passenger side. For that, of course, what we will need to have the shift rail future joint undertaking established in a balanced way, as again we discussed, uh, both from the stakeholder perspective as well as geography. Yes. So I will try to help as much as I can <laughs> myself with that. And, uh, and then we can reach the, you know, the perception of the public. Then I will use you know, the Henrik's words from the yesterday. You make rail cool let's again. Make, <laughs> let's make rail cool again. Yes. Let's make ra rail cool again. That's a fantastic way of putting it. Can I get back to uh, Bardo, perhaps the same question? Yes, well, as, as, a, as a takeaway, uh, I would say clearly on uh, the importance of, uh, of collaboration and the willingness uh, of, uh, and uh, I mentioned what uh, Libor said, but I, I would say really willingness um, uh, to really to, to work together and to make sure that we have uh, um, really results and deliverables that are benefit for, I mean, for the community as a well. whole. Um, and as far as the uh, Hero Rail is concerned, well, it, it's a really a fantastic opportunity indeed to communicate uh, how rail is cool, but also to, 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 really to, um, to target those citizens that normally don't see rail really, uh, or they have a kind of old fashioned idea still of rail. And there a shift to rail, I think it's, uh, um, or the success of shift to rail uh, will be uh, the perfect channels also to pass the, the message that actually rail is really up to the technology and is ready for the future. Uh, it's really a unique opportunity to do that. So mm -hmm. and and we will actually will support uh, Carol and his team uh, whenever is needed to, you know, to pass this message. And what about the European Year of Rail? Because this will be another key element. What would you like to see from the European Year of Rail? Well, I mean, more awareness. Uh, I mean, the, the, uh, as a result, of course, I mean, we, all of us, we have, uh, we have our, um, let's say, own uh, communication strategies and our members, of course, but all in all, I think the, the, the basic uh, idea or the basic, uh, we we'll say, objective would be really to create more awareness uh, of the, um, of, as I said before, I mean, on what the, uh, um, sort of how 
good and how technology advance could also be real. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it changed the perception of the users uh, regarding the, um, the idea that they may have about, about trains, about rail. Okay, thank you very much. Daria, perhaps uh, I come to you. What are the key takeaways, the main key takeaways that we can get from you? Um, I would focus on three points. Uh, so first of all, we should focus that everyone is included, uh, that all uh, rail actors uh, are included in uh, the next research program. So second, that uh, everyone has opportunity to be in the governance of this process. The third, that, uh, that anyone who can't uh, uh, don't have such capabilities as the big actors that they would have uh, other um, opportunities, institutional funding to be uh, in the system, in, in this process. And regarding uh, the European uh, Year of Rail, um, I would focus on the success stories uh, because we had so many uh, stories how uh, rail, uh, urban rail reshaped the cities, reshaped uh, the regions. And uh, I would focus on that we need to promote this success story and really show that rail is the backbone of mobility and urban rail is the backbone uh, of urban mobility. Yes, we, we, we should talk about the success stories. Yes. Be more an ambassador of rail. Absolutely, much more positive. That, uh, sometimes more positive. We, have, uh, we are looking too much in what doesn't work instead of thinking that every single day we transport millions of people True. in the urban transport, billions of people, and we have tons and tons of goods that we are transporting right. yes. for yeah. keeping the logistic value correct, chain. Correct. But if we need to evolve towards uh, being able to address the future needs of the story of the 100 years old guy. But Philippe, you launch... Uh, well, first there are two questions, but also maybe you can tell a bit more about the OPON initiative that UNIFE launched together with uh, some of its members that uh, uh, Henri Parlafarge presented yesterday also. First, first of all, if I answer to the, the first question on the takeaways, I think there is, what from what you say, there is enthusiasm from the rail uh, community. Happy to see that Urban Rail wants to be more, more involved in, in Shift to Rail 2. And then there is also a question that I've always been quite uh, surprised by this is by, uh, and we have a Romanian commissioner for transport and a Bulgarian commissioner for uh, research. It's uh, the fact that uh, the, the uh, EU 13, not all of them, but let's say part of this EU 13 country, have never shown a big interest in being part of, of uh, ship to rail. So I really hope with uh, two commissioners as influential as they are, that now we will have some participants. And you know that we know that. Uh, 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 um, Carlo, you've been trying for years and years to bring new members from this part of Europe uh, on board. The, 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 the second thing is about the, uh, uh, the, the, the fact for the year of rail is that we, sh we should do like the, the Chinese when they have the Dragon Year. I mean, we need to have events every month, uh, not only two or three events in the year, but we need to have things, uh, visits of factories, and we, we need to have uh, seminars with uh, students. And that brings me to the, 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 the skills issue. In fact, we are discovering today that uh, there is a kind of shortage of skills in, in, uh, in, in rail. And uh, uh, it's important for us to, to show to the young people that really it's a sector where the digitalization is, is now progressing a lot and they don't come to a sector which looks a little bit old fashioned. So uh, Unife, with some of our members, have launched uh, uh, yes, uh, today, yesterday, two days ago, sorry, a campaign come called uh, Hop On for the Planet. Uh, now there's a, a special website where we have information and where we give information for the young people to say, join the, 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 the rail sector. There are a lot of interesting that you can, you will be in the heart of the, the Green Deal. So this Hop Up campaign, which is now open and you can see on the, on the, the website, uh, uh, aims at bringing all those people back, back to the rail sector or to the rail sector, especially when it's about the young people. So, and we'll be happy to see if uh, together with uh, uh, the uh, taking, we could do some things uh, during the year 2021, because this is uh, something concrete. And if you bring new people to our sector, that would be a big success. And if they see that research and innovation is at the heart of the policy of the sector, that would be fantastic. 
That's a clear message, I think, for Absolutely. timekeeping's sake. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much, uh, lady, because there is a lady, Darla. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Libor, for joining us. And see you back, uh, I hope, in life, uh, real life next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Thank you. Carlo, we are almost at the end of a very packed and filled two days event. Uh, we asked everybody to wrap up, but I didn't ask you that same question. So what are your key takeaways of those last two days? Well, I'm really glad that we, at the end, we had uh, these two days. Uh, we wanted to have them as uh, two days dedicated to reconnecting the people in the rail system. Uh, unfortunately, we had to do this uh, digital event because the current situation is not evolving as we expected. Uh, but it's been a moment, really, to, to bring together the, uh, the people, to, to communicate, to exchange ideas. And I think many words have been said. Uh, from the, the famous... Uh, uh, Make rail cool again. <laughs> I'll never forget that one. <laughs> this, is, I think, is something that will be um, uh, to be used uh, with moderation, but uh, to yeah. pass a strong message. But I, uh, for me, the most important aspect has uh, been mentioned is that uh, uh, that we start to define the concept related to introducing on new technology like mm -hmm. automation and digitalization in a much stronger manner. We are not looking only ATO, uh, meaning that we make a, a robotic mm -hmm. vehicle. We are looking at introduction of ATO in the system yeah. and maximize the performance of the system. We are looking at key priorities that will increase, as Libor said, but also the other uh, now in the, the panel, uh, on the effectiveness and efficiencies of, of, of the overall system. And therefore, we need a harmonization also. That I've heard uh, several times. Yes, okay. and exactly. The commitment towards um, harmonization that has been put on the table many times during the two days, and more strongly by Joseph Doppelbauer and Matthias Rute uh, at uh, midday, I think was a clear message. And uh, you can see the, exactly the evolution of, uh, of this, as I said before, the sector reappropriating itself of mm -hmm. the overall system and committing to move it forward together. Yes, I felt a commitment. I felt a readiness to do that, this together. And that's something new, perhaps. I don't, I'm not sure it's so new, but uh, I think uh, the, the difference now is that we have the instrument to deliver it. Mm -hmm. and I think this is really the key important aspect. The, 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 the question is, at the end, we can have a lot of ambition, but if this ambition is not matched by the resources to deliver this, it's extremely difficult to achieve such type of commitment. I think now we have the correct framework. We have uh, the, the co constellation aligned to a certain extent, no? uh, into which we have the, uh, the commitment, we have uh, the, the uh, different interest that are colliding, clearly, because they're different interests, but at the same time, the mm -hmm. understanding of working together and the benefit. And the importance of doing it together. Exactly. And now we have also the resources and the instrument to achieve it. Mm -hmm. So now we don't have excuses. Now is a commitment to, to achieve it. And uh, during these two days, I, I thought a lot about do we do it again, this research shift to real innovation days. And my, my takeaway is that, yes, and I hope next year to have it uh, uh, in person, uh, yes. uh, to have a, a big audience in front of us, to have a discussion also much more dynamic. Because it's building bridges, in exactly, fact. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And this is one of the key images we have in the, the movie about the um, shift to rail uh, teaser about the European Union of Rail is the bridge where a train is passing, connecting two parts of, of, of... I think this is the key message we want to pass. Rail is there to connect people, is there to connect business, is real to connect the freight, is to connect Europe. Is Europe and the world, perhaps. And the world, uh, we, well, we where may, we were, I. We, we can look big. And also what we have seen is that we have pushed the boundaries. Yesterday night we have the, the event dedicated to Hyperloop, mm -hmm. that we know that there is a lot of discussion going on, but, uh, well, it's a new coming technology and uh, something that uh, will be changing. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, how much it will change, how much it will materialize. We heard the deadline 2030 and so on and so on. So, and also there we saw the, the, the push, the initiative, the courage uh, to, mm -hmm. to do these type of things. I think these are all st strong positive messages about mm -hmm. the, the, the role that rail would like to have in the future years. Yeah. What's the first thing that you will do with the successor of Shift to Rail? What's your first priority? Open a bottle of champagne? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, second, <laughs> second. second priority. No, I think uh, the second priority is uh, really to put it in motion. 
to put the machinery in motion, not to lose any time, to be sure that day one we are ready to start with the sector, with the company we have committed, but also the other beneficiary. As Daria said, said mm -hmm. Daria said, not all will have the possibility to be in, in the, the high-level commitment requested in a partnership. All included, she said. But we need to be inclusive, okay? And this brings back to us to the question of how we integrate better U13. Philippe said before, we did a lot of effort to do it, but well, we need to be clear. We were not so successful to a certain extent. We have been limited success. Uh, we have a limited su success. So now the question is how we reinvent the way of participation, how we reinvent the inclusiveness. And, uh, and once again, it's not depending only on resources, it's depending on commitment, it's depending on sharing the same objective and all the steps together. Yeah, and what can they expect from you? I think the expectation from us should be that we are there to listen the needs that they are and mm -hmm. to bring the different system that we heard are, are different, mm -hmm. are different level levels or different yes, of evolution, mm -hmm. uh, 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 to bring all this system at the same level and be sure that we will be listening what is needed. But also, not to uh, misunderstand, we need to have one system. We mm -hmm. will not go mm -hmm. to address we will go to address local issues, but to realize one network. I think this is the fundamental message. So we need to have and accept and believe, not in the compromise of the minimis, but in compromise to maximize the performance of the network. Yeah, I think we've heard also the, the difficulties with the nation states uh, in, in comparison with Europe, the European level. How could we convince the different nations to cooperate more, to make more choices for rail? Uh, I think uh, the, the choices are there. I, I, I am much more uh, positive uh, from this point of view. I see uh, also in the recent uh, um, meeting organized by the German presidency recently, the, meeting, the informal meeting of the Ministry of Transport on the commitment towards this uh, 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 connectiveness inside the European network. So uh, I'm, I think we have the correct, as I said, we have the correct framework to move on. Um, uh, I hope that there will be the resources that will match the expectation as uh, all the sector is asking for. But if we don't have the, this uh, level of resources, I think we need to have the courage to go on and to make the change happening. And this is really, we have to be smart in this and rethink the way to do it, maybe. Okay, that's a clear, strong and positive message. Yes. And perhaps we can conclude with building bridges, as you told us. Yes. Absolutely. I think this is really the, the idea. And uh, maybe we can conclude with a small video to, to show it. Uh, yeah. our... Okay, let's watch together, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And with this video, we can close this two-day event and you will agree on this one. It was fully packed, but certainly inspiring. As for me, it was an honor to be your host. Thanks to everybody who participated. Thanks to all the great panel members and moderators. And of course, thanks to you, our fantastic audience, Carlo. Well, first of all, thank you to you, Indra, for being a great host of this uh, two days event. We have uh, lived uh, a lot of experiences during th these two days. And I would like to thank you all the panelists who have been with us uh, during the two days, high-level panelists, uh, all the colleagues that have been running the webinars uh, during these two days. And uh, we have seen the European Year of Rail uh, teaser video that is uh, the launching point of the European Year of Rail. I think uh, we will come back in one year with uh, these type of events to reconnect And so together. we're ready to make rail cool again. That, uh, that's <laughs> the one to end. Thank you very much, ladies Thank and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Have an excellent weekend and see you next year in life.